So let's take a minute to think about the big picture here. There are four types of market setups that we learn about in economics. Perfect competition, which we learned about first. And then we kind of talked about monopolies and oligopolies, and now we're talking about monopolistic competition. So what's the difference between all these, right? So the number of firms in a perfect competition is high. There's many firms. In theory, infinity firms if needed. Same with monopolistic competition. So the competition part that's the same between these two is the fact that there's, you know, many firms. And this is kind of this question kind of goes with this, the barriers to entry here. There are no barriers to entry in perfect competition, as we learned. Same with monopolistic competition that we're learning about right now. There are also no barriers to entry, which is why anyone can enter, and that's why there are you know, uh, many firms. Oligopolies, on the other hand, they have high barriers to entry. Same with monopolies. In fact, monopolies, there, it's not even applicable because no one else is allowed to enter. And that's why, because there's high barriers to entry, in an oligopoly there's only few firms. And in a monopoly there's only one firm. So that's sort of the difference here. Now, this actually kind of also tells us about the long run profit. Because there's, you know, many firms as we learned, and no barriers to entry in perfect competition, the long run profits are zero. Because, hey, if you're in a perfectly competitive market and if you're making a profit, some other guy's going to come in and compete with you and then your profits are going to go down until it's zero. Same with monopolistic competition, so the competition part, so far these two are the same in that there's no long run profits because there's competition, no, no barriers to entry, many firms. For these guys, the long run profits, you know, they could be positive, right? They could be greater than or equal to zero. It might just coincidentally be zero. Uh, would never be negative because, you know, you could always exit and, you know, you wouldn't make a negative profit in the long run. But you could actually have a positive profit in the long run for either monopolies or oligopolies because, hey, if you have a profit, hey, uh, nobody's necessarily going to enter and price compete and lower your price, so you could have long run profits there. But the main difference, and what is the difference if you look at these first two columns, so far they're identical, the difference between perfect and monopolistic competition is that monopolistically competitive firms have some market power. So the market power here, they have no market power, which really is why P equals MR, which means that so all these are saying the same thing. No market power, P equals MR always, and that you are a price taker. And uh, this further, this sort of comes because of the fact that here you have identical products. If you're in a perfectly competitive market selling bananas, every single person has the exact same banana. You can't even tell where it came from. So here, the, the other sort of thing, all this is kind of saying the same thing, identical products. So identical products, your price takers, P equals MR, all that's really pointing at the fact that you have no market power. But with monopolistic competition, you have some market power. And so here you have specialized, you have differentiated products. Differentiated products. And uh, so really for all these, because you know, you're, you know, here you, again, for both these you have a high degree of market power. So really, long story short, for all three of these, your price is above your MR. P is bigger than MR, you're not price takers. That's the mathematical way of saying you're a price setter or a price maker, not a price taker. So these three are price setters. Now, to maximize your profit here, we learned that P has to equal MC, which technically, here you could also, if you wanted to use MR equals MC, because P and MR are the same thing for these guys. But for these guys, you can't use P equal MC, because P and MR are not the same thing. So for all three of these, to maximize your profits, you want MR to equal MC. So that is the condition that'll help you maximize your profits. So technically, MR equals MC is a universal condition. No matter who you are, MR equals MC maximizes your profit. You could additionally use P equals MC because P and MR are the same thing for perfect competition. So that's why we use P equals MC. But for all these, if you remember with monopolies, MR equals MC. Oligopolies, once you found the strategic demand curve, MR equals MC, and same thing here. So that is the big picture. Now, if we were to think about the graph big picture deadweight loss wise, if we wanted to kind of add a deadweight loss here, there's zero deadweight loss. Here there's high deadweight loss. Here there's uh, you know some deadweight loss, and here also there's some deadweight loss. So it's kind of like a spectrum. Here, 
if we had a perfect competition, you'd produce here where supply and demand intersect. This is a regular curve, right? Now, if you're in the same, you know, here's the thing. The demand curve is kind of unaffected based on whether the market has competition or a monopoly or any level of competition. So the demand curve is the same demand curve. The only difference is going to be that if it's perfect competition, this is equilibrium. If it's a monopoly, the other extreme, you're going to find the market's MR, go up to the demand curve, and that is the monopoly. So here's the monopoly, and here's the perfect competition. And since so the monopoly notice has all this dead weight loss. Now, if you're an oligopoly and monopolistic competition, you're kind of somewhere in between. You'll never be asked to find exactly where. But, you know, somewhere in between here, this is an oligopoly. And somewhere even between them, you know, you have a monopolistic competition. So here, which is where we are. So we have some dead weight loss. You know, it's not quite zero dead weight loss, even though we're making no profits in the long run. But it's not as much dead weight loss as these other two cases.